Welcome to episode three of the ultimate podcast guide for beginners. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to edit your podcast. Over the past few years, I've gone from being obsessed with listening to podcasts, to starting one as a hobby, to eventually starting my own creative agency where I produce and launch podcasts for other creators. In addition to hosting my own show, Creator Club, I've helped tons of other creators of all sizes to start their own podcast. And I'm so excited to be helping you to start your podcast today. This episode is going to be fully dedicated to showing you the step-by-step process of editing your podcast episode with a free editing software called Audacity. You can go ahead and download that now if you haven't already, and then you can follow along with my instructions and we can edit together. Probably goes without saying because it is a free open source software, but this isn't sponsored. I just recommend it because you can use it on Windows and Mac and it's totally free. So before we dive in, I'll just tell you that this editing process assumes that you already have an intro and outro ready. So I already have a complete tutorial showing you how to create your own intro and outro using theme music editing in Audacity. So I'm going to link that up here and also at the end. So you can either create your own intro and outro, or if that feels overwhelming to you, you can hire me. No, but seriously, my agency does provide the service of creating intros and outros as well as editing podcasts. So that is always available to you if any of the stuff that I'm explaining throughout this series is something that you just feel like you don't really want to take on. You'd rather get some help with it. Hit me up. But anyway, this assumes that you've got an intro and an outro and what I call the body of your podcast episode or just the main recording that you did either with a guest or on your own. All right, so let's open up Audacity and get started. Just so you know, when you open up Audacity, you're going to notice that it's pretty dated looking. I often get that feedback from clients when they might be used to GarageBand or other types of software. Yeah, it does look sort of old. It's because it's free and open source. There aren't like designers who are working on trying to make it more user friendly, but it's awesome because it's free and it's basic. It's simple. It doesn't have a lot of extra bells and whistles. So trust me, it's going to be easy to use, even if it doesn't like look like it will be. (laughs) You're going to start by simply going to file import and then you're going to select your intro and outro and the body of your podcast episode and get that imported into your timeline just as a side note in case you recorded with the zoom h5 and xlr microphone setup that i described in the previous video you will have more than one track one for each of your guests or co-hosts and what you want to do is just make sure that the beginning of those clips is always lined up That way it'll be in sync. You won't have issues with them overlapping each other. They started the recording at the same time, so they will be in sync as long as the start of a clip always lines up with the start of the other clip. I won't dwell on that too long because most likely most of you will only have a single clip from your recording, but just note if you have to, make sure that they're in sync as you do this. Next, we want to make sure that the sections of our podcast are in the chronological order that we're going for. So you're going to start by selecting the time shift tool, which is a line with two arrows pointing left and right. Once you select this, you can click and drag on any of your tracks to rearrange it in the timeline. So you're going to want to make sure that your intro is lined up with the very beginning and that the body of your podcast starts at the end of your intro. And then of course that your outro starts at the end of the body section. Just make sure everything's lined up in the order that you'd like. If you added music that fades out at the end of your intro, like I teach you to in my intro and outro editing video, then you will have a little bit of a section of music that you want to overlap with the beginning of the body part of your podcast. So just make sure that that overlap is timed how you would like. At any time, you can just press the play button to listen back to what you've edited so far. You can click on the timeline and it will start playing from wherever you select. You'll want to do the same with the outro if you edited it so that the music fades in at the beginning. Make sure that it overlaps accordingly. Now that you've got your intro and outro lined up how you would like, it's time to listen through your podcast and cut out any mistakes that you'd like to remove. To do this, you'll use the selection tool, which looks like a cursor in like a word editing document. As you're listening, if you come across any section that is a mistake or an overly long pause or something that you ended up repeating or redoing, All you have to do is select the section you would like to remove and then press the delete key on your keyboard. Just as a note, if you have two different tracks, you need to make sure that you select and delete the same section from both of them so they don't go out of sync. 
one key tip that I want to share with you that is going to make your editing sound a lot more polished and professional is to always make sure that your selections start and end during a moment of silence, no matter how brief. Anytime between speaking, like even between words sometimes, there'll be a break of silence that you'll be able to see visually in the audio waveform because it will be a flat line rather than a wave shape. If your selections start and end during those flat line moments when it's silent, the end listener won't be able to hear that you've cut something out. It will seamlessly transition from the end of one sentence to the next, or it'll skip over a word or whatever. If you don't do that and you cut midway through a word, your edit is not going to sound nearly as professional or seamless because when you play it back, you'll be able to hear that something has been cut out. But if you make sure that your selection always starts and ends when the line is flat, it's going to sound great. To give you a sense of what I'm talking about, let's listen to two examples. Creator Club podcast. Today I want to talk about Instagram. Hey, welcome to this example episode of the Creator Club podcast. Today, today I want to talk about Instagram. This is such an important technique to grasp because it really is going to make your podcast sound much more professional and polished. Whereas if you cut off midway through a word, it's really going to take people out of the experience and remind them that they're listening to a podcast and not just sitting and chilling and listening to friends. This is also a good concept to become aware of because it's going to help you as you get more used to editing because you'll be able to edit not only with your ears, but also with your eyes. You'll be able to see where the mistakes are. You might even get used to what the waveform of an um sounds like in your voice. These are the kinds of things that I have noticed after years and years of editing my own audio. And it really just helps you be more quick and efficient when it comes to editing because as you're listening through, you'll already be able to see, oh, here's a long pause. I want to cut that out and it'll just help you get faster with editing your podcast. So as a takeaway, just remember that when the audio is quieter, when it's completely silent, it's a flat line and the louder it is, the bigger the wave is. And that will help you get a sense of what you're looking at when you're looking at your audio waveform during editing. Once you've gone through your entire episode and you've cut out the sections that you want to cut out and you've lined up your intro and outro in a way that you like, it's time to export it as a complete MP3 file. All you need to do is go to file, export, and then just choose MP3. That's my personal preference because it is a smaller file size, so it doesn't take up as much space, but .wav or WAV files are higher quality. But personally, I think MP3 is just fine for podcasts. And then of course, choose somewhere on your computer to save it that you'll be able to find it later. Now that you've got your first fully edited podcast episode, it is time to get that on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I know this part of the process can be really intimidating for some people because it seems complicated and you're not really sure where to start, but I'm going to walk you through every single piece of the process so that you can submit your podcast to Apple Podcasts and Spotify along with me in this video. So to complete the process of getting your podcast ready for launch, Go ahead and watch this video next. Of course, if you want to subscribe, I really appreciate it. It helps support my channel. Uh, but more than anything, just go watch this video because I think it's going to be really helpful for you. So as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.